Hey y'all, I got my seeds this week and I waited to be able to open them up with you guys. And I'm excited. Let's see if I can, I don't know. I remember some of the things that I ordered. So I ordered from Baker Creek heirloom seeds. And then I ordered from a place I've never ordered before called Papa's Garden Supply. And I ordered from them because I wanted to get some hybrid seeds for my tomatoes. I'll show you that in just a second. Let me finish opening this one. Let's see what I got. The free seed, a tomato spoon. Huh. Micro mini fruit. Maybe the world's tiniest tomatoes. Be kind of fun. All right, so I'm definitely gonna be doing some spaghetti squash this year. I just got this particular variety. I don't remember ordering this one. Oh, no, Odessa, yes. It's a type of zucchini. Now, see, I remember ordering this now. It's a vining plant, so it will go great on my trellises outside. It says that it produces for a long season and is among the tastiest. So I ordered some new things that I've never tried before. Other things that I liked last year, like this black cherry, so delicious, very good. And it was hardier than the other plants that I had in my garden that got sick. It eventually did get sick, but not as quickly as the others. And it produced a lot more than my other cherry tomato varieties. Let's see, we got my, I saw these and I thought they looked so pretty. They're pink. These are pretty zinnias. It's a salmon pink. I'm not sure where I'm gonna put these yet, but I saw them and I kind of had to have them. Mara, what is it? What do you want? So, come here. Last year I did a lot of companion planting with borage. Do you need to go outside? Is that what's going on? She's very good at communicating. She's our uh, golden retriever puppy. She's a year old now, but she's still very much a puppy. You wanna go out? Here. This year, I'm going to be mixing things up. I'm not gonna just have a row of tomatoes like I did last year. I'm gonna be mixing in a lot of borage. I got this white one this year. I thought that was kind of pretty. With my marigold seeds, which I got a ton of. I harvested from my marigolds last year. I'm gonna try to keep my nightshades mixed up, but I have a lot of them this year. I'm gonna be doing my tobacco like I did last year, tomatoes, peppers, and what was the last one? There's one more. Oh, I'm doing eggplant this year. In fact, I got a different variety. The first year I did eggplant, they did great. Next year, the la I guess it was two years ago, not so much. I ended up not doing eggplant last year, but I got a new variety that I'm excited about. In fact, I think that is in this packet here. Where are you? Ah, this eggplant looked very interesting. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna say this name correctly. This is a variety that's from Iraq, Aswad. Now, I got this one because it's supposed to be very, it's supposed to do very well in the heat and which out here in the South, we're in Georgia, North Georgia, zone 8A. It gets very humid and very hot. And so I just thought I'd try it out. It looked kind of interesting. It's a, an Iraqi variety, huge satiny dark purple black fruit to three pounds, shaped like squat teardrops, sweet and tender. So I'm gonna be trying this out and seeing how it does. Because my last year that I did eggplant, which was two years ago, they got so sick. I don't even think I got one eggplant out of them. The reason I'm mixing things up is I wanna create some bug confusion. It might sound kind of crazy, but it is real. It is a scientific thing that bugs have to land on their host plant so many times before they start to lay eggs. So if you have a whole row of tomatoes, you're gonna get a lot of bugs compared to if you mix things up a little bit. If you have your tomatoes maybe next to some borage and some marigolds mixed in maybe with some squash instead of just having a ton of tomatoes in one row. So I'm gonna be trying to mix things up as much as I possibly can 
which I'm kind of excited about. It'll be fun. And this year my garden's gonna have cattle panels on every single row, so that will be a lot easier to do as well. Long Island cheese, this one did amazing. So check this thing out, this is the Long Island cheese. I mean, it's still going, look, check this out. These ones over here, I'm trying to get them to come this way. I've got one trying to go that way. It's just it's not stopping, y'all. It's not stopping. It kept going until the frost. And I still have tons of them. <laughs> so I'm going to be putting this guy where I put the long, let's see, I guess that would have been called the Tahitian melon last year, which also did really well, but I don't find that we're eating that one as much as we are this one. So I'm just gonna do this one this year because we got, goodness, I think at the end of it, we got about 200 pounds of squash and I just, we can't really go through that much squash. So I think I'm gonna be doing just this one. And then of course, I'm gonna be doing the, where'd you go? The spaghetti squash, which is somewhere around here. This one was amazing. That's why I'm gonna be putting it where the Tahitian melon was because it has a ton of space right there. This one's good, you guys. In fact, I think I got four packs. This is the Chinese red noodle. I did this one two years ago and it was so tasty and delicious. We love to just saute them up. They're very crunchy. I did, I think it was called the, um, what was that one called? Ah, yes, last year I did the, it's called a Blue Lake Pole. And I just got that at my local hardware store. And I put that on my big, huge teepee and it did great, but I didn't like the flavor of that one. It was not crunchy and the skin was very thick. So we ended up really not eating any of those. I ended up getting, giving a lot of them to the chickens. So I decided I'm gonna go back to this variety because it's delicious and we'll actually eat it. And if we have extra, I'll can some too. It's kind of funny, these ones, when you cook them, they do not stay that pretty purple color. They end up turning green. This one, it's called a lemon squash. Most popular summer squash. The shape, size, and color of a lemon. Huge yields and pest resistant. Ah, that's probably why I got it right there, is pest resistant. <laughs> I do organic garden, so I'm out there a lot picking off pests. And another reason why I'm gonna be mixing things up a lot this year to create that bug confusion. So that will be interesting. I thought they looked kind of fun. I wanted to try a few new things this year, but a lot of the stuff I'm gonna be doing, uh, stuff that I, is not new. Although I'm gonna take that back because I am gonna be doing a lot of new tomatoes this year. This one's called a brandy wine, and I got this one because it's supposed to do really well out in this particular area. It's supposed to handle the humidity well. In fact, let me show you the other two. This is a beef steak, by the way. It's a great potato leaf variety from 1885. The most popular heirloom vegetable, a favorite of many gardeners, large fruit with superb flavor. So, the other two that I wanted, I'm gonna be doing mostly Oh, that's cute. They have a little handwritten note here saying, thank you, Paw Paw. <laughs> Most of the tomatoes I'm gonna be doing this year are a paste variety. This one I've got is called a Juliet, and it is not an heirloom, it's a hybrid. And I got it because it's supposed to be specifically created for humid, hot environments. It's not supposed to be as susceptible to disease. So I'm excited to try that one out. And it is a paste tomato doing mostly paste because I want to be able to have enough tomatoes in my pantry. I go through a lot of tomatoes for stews and just all different kinds of meals that I make. And then I got this big beef plus, <laughs> another one that's supposed to do well in the humid environment, another hybrid. This pepper did really well for me. Generally sweet peppers don't, I don't have very good success with them. I do a lot of spicy stuff. This one, Rawia, I think it's pronounced, is it's kind of like a bell pepper and it is one of the sweeter peppers that did well. So I was gonna try it again this year. And I also saved seeds from that this variety last year as well. In fact, I saved a lot of those seeds. One of the things I'm gonna be doing is growing a lot of the tomatoes from last year that were already in my environment. And I saved a lot of seeds from my plants last year. 
Like this one's the Kellogg's breakfast, which I do like, but I find that they get sick very quickly. So I'm gonna try a few of the varieties that I did last year from seeds that I collected, and we'll see how they do if they do any better. It's kind of a little experiment. They're also open pollinated, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what we get. Might get some weird hybrids in there, but maybe they'll do really well. Okra. This is something I've never done out here, even being in the South. I know it does really well. I got this one. I just thought it looked really pretty. A Jing orange. It's a Japanese variety. Again, supposed to do really well out here in okra generally. I've, every, everybody I've seen that grows okra out here, they get huge and they do very well. So this one will be a great one to kind of mix up and companion plant with my nightshades because this is not in the nightshade family. Doing a lot of cayennes this year, along with paprika, which I have leftover seeds from last year, and trying to collect as many as I can. I'd like to start being able to make most of the spices that I use in the kitchen. I use a lot of cayenne and I use a lot of paprika, and the interesting thing is I made some of my own paprika powder and it was delicious. Nothing like you would taste from the paprika in the store. I would always taste paprika from the store, and I honestly can't taste much of the flavor, but the ones from the garden, they had a delicious, nice heat to them. Created a lovely flavor for cooking, which I just haven't found in the paprika from the store. I got this one because I thought it was pretty. This is salvia, amor salmon. And I haven't looked up this particular variety if it's a Evergreen, I have one salvia in my garden that is an evergreen. And I am not 100% sure on this one. It is a perennial though. But I guess I'm just a real sucker for that salmon color. I think it's so pretty. Again, not sure where I'm putting this one yet. I plan on putting my spaghetti squash on some of my arches outside. And then I think I'm just gonna do one pickling cucumber this year. Everybody always wants me to do pickles and I find that I do them and nobody really eats them. But so this year I'm just gonna do one so we can still get some pickles, but not too many. I think that's it y'all. I'm trying to think if there's anything else because I've got my big old box of seeds here. I need to find a, a better way of organizing everything. <laughs> At this point, I've just got a bag of seeds for spring, summer and a bag for Fall. Now with my peppers, I overwintered some peppers. So I have them upstairs in my bathroom because I have a big garden bathtub area. I got two Tabasco peppers, I think it's two, and then several of the habaneros that we love. And I make that fermented hot sauce that we go through quite a bit of. In fact, I need to start making, I've got a bunch of fermented Tabasco peppers in my back kitchen here. I want to make my own fermented Tabasco sauce. So when I make that for the first time, I'd like to make that with you guys and we'll see how that goes. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna be doing these guys, but they're overwintering upstairs for right now. And I, I've never done that before, so I'm gonna see how that works. I did this one last year and it did not do very well. Compare it to my Long Island cheese and the Tahitian melons, this one maybe gave me three squashes. Was it three? Maybe four out of six plants, so it did not do well. Not gonna be doing this one again. This is the zucchini I did last year, but it did pretty well and we got quite a bit from it, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it again. This zucchini black beauty variety. And of course, we're gonna be doing some Kirknick squash, but not as much as I did last year. I kinda went overboard last year. We got squashed out and so I'm not gonna be doing very many. In fact, I've got a whole pantry full of squash that I canned that we haven't eaten. So I'm definitely not gonna be doing as many. All right, y'all, I think that's going to be it for today. And we'll see you next time. Let me know what y'all gonna be growing, if you're gonna be growing anything different or new this year. I'd love to hear about it. And we'll see you next time.